Hi there, welcome to Get Productive with Microsoft Azure Deployment Templates. This is Episode 7, Deploy a Storage Account with Azure CLI. My name is Tim Warner. Our goals for today's lesson are, first, I want to make sure you know what the Azure CLI is. Next, very important point, it seems to me, comparing the Azure CLI with Azure PowerShell. And lastly, how to deploy an ARM template using the Azure CLI. Go to timw.info slash ARM to look at the overall TOC for this course. CLI stands for Command Line Interface. So Azure CLI, formally defined as an open source, cross-platform Azure management tool set. This is important. Microsoft now has so many of their products at GitHub as open source projects that anyone, including you or I, can contribute to. The Azure CLI works just fine on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and it does just all of your standard stuff with Azure Active Directory and Azure Resources. You can go to the GitHub project page by going to timw.info slash azcli if you're so inclined. Azure CLI v1, Microsoft used Node.js. v2, the current version, is a Python application. The good news, though, is that if you don't have Python 3 installed on your system, the Azure CLI installer will lay that down for you automatically. Now, important point here, what is the situation with regard to Azure CLI versus Azure PowerShell? This is not an either or proposition, all right? It used to be before PowerShell Core came along, which as you know is also cross-platform, that if you worked on Linux or Mac OS, you could either do an RDP session or an SSH connection if you're willing to install that on Windows Server to get into Windows and then run PowerShell commands. Now that's not so much of an issue. Back then, you would use the Azure CLI if you needed a shell session in Azure from Mac OS or Linux. But again, nowadays it's all cross-platform. So it's mainly a question of two things now. One would be your personal and professional preferences. That is you and your teammates. For most Azure products, you've got fairly equal coverage between Azure CLI and Azure PowerShell. So like I said, it's a question of which language you personally feel better about and you're more effective with. However, there is a caveat to that. There are some Azure products, namely the container products like Azure Container Registry, Azure Container Instance, Azure Kubernetes Service, that are much heavily skewed toward Azure CLI and there's not so much support for Azure PowerShell. I'm not exactly sure what's going on behind the scenes there, but if you are gonna do a serious amount of work with containers in Azure, you'll definitely wanna get more comfortable with Azure CLI. But in general, if you go to the Microsoft Docs and you look up how to do such and so an activity in Azure, you'll find examples for both Azure PowerShell as well as Azure CLI. Getting started with Azure CLI. AZ is a non-interactive language by default, so you can put AZ commands into scripts and then run those scripts to perform automation. Azure CLI v1 used the keyword Azure, and now in Azure CLI v2, it's AZ. It's a little bit faster to type. So you use AZ space and then your command or your context to configure the environment, for instance, to change, for example, the default output. You could run AZ configure. To look for commands, you can do AZ find with some keyword, storage, web, VM, whatever the case may be. To get help in Azure CLI, it will be AZ command and then dash dash help. The way AZ commands work, if you've been with Windows administration for a while, you, do you remember the network shell command line tool, NetSH? AZ is structured in a similar way where you have AZ, then you have your context. Storage, for example, would be for the Azure storage system. And then you've got, it's either going to be a verb or it's going to be a second noun. With storage, there's so many different types of storage. You would do storage account if you were looking to get into the context of, of course, the storage account. If you wanted to list VMs, you would do AZ VM list. There's a pretty standard selection of these verbs. So there's high degree of consistency in Azure CLI, just as there is in Azure PowerShell. You should be aware that there's an interactive mode in Azure CLI, and this is a great way to get comfortable with the language because the interactive extension loads a kind of a stripped down command shell GUI, for lack of a better term, where it gives you inline documentation and examples as you type. It's pretty cool. In this demo, we'll deploy an Azure Resource Manager template using Azure CLI. 
In episode three, I show you how to set up your development environment. So I'm trusting that you have the Azure CLI installed on your system. And I trust that you've already installed the Azure CLI tools extension in Visual Studio Code. One nice thing, well, two nice things that the Azure CLI tools VS Code extension gives you is one, language support for Azure CLI, and two, IntelliSense code completion. All right, so as you can see on the screen now, I've got my trusty storage account.json template. And I've made some adjustments to the template since the previous episode. Remember that a storage account in Azure needs to have a globally unique name. So what I've done is I've created a parameter called STG account prefix, where I provide a default value that is the actual prefix. And then what I've done in my variable section is I've constructed the storage account name by using the concat function. First of all, taking the value of the storage account prefix parameter, and then taking only the first three characters from the unique string. I introduced you very briefly to the unique string function in the previous lesson that performs a hash computation based on some input. And I'm using the object ID of the resource group. And then normally the unique string, I think it produces a 13 character string. Take is gonna allow you to specify the first N characters. I don't want a full 13 character string. I just want three characters. I'm gonna do at least one totally separate lesson on this expression syntax. So I'm just trying to get you familiar with the lay of the land gradually before we get there. All right, and lastly, down at the bottom of the template, I've added an output where I'm just going to echo the value of the storage account name variable. In other words, it'll tell me what Azure finally named the storage account. I've also created an Azure CLI script file called Azure CLI.azcli. Remember that extension, because in VS Code, if you use azcli as your extension, you'll see down in the lower right, the language mode goes to Azure CLI scrapbook, and you'll get IntelliSense code completion. I've already completed all of these commands here, so I'm just going to right-click them and run them in the terminal, as you can see here. AZ login is going to initiate, well, a browser-based login here. Let me select my Azure Active Directory account and then come back to the Azure CLI. Let me raise my terminal window a little bit because what we'll want to see, I have more than one subscription. I want to make sure that the correct subscription is my default. And in this case, that is correct. My Microsoft Azure sponsorship subscription is correct. If it's not, we can do AZ account set dash dash subscription and then the friendly name of the subscription. You can run AZ configure to do things like setting your default output. I've already done that and I've specified table as opposed to the default output, which is JSON. If you want to get a run of, say, resource groups, you can use AZ and then the context and then list. In this case, it's saying, show me all of the resource groups that I have in the Microsoft Azure sponsorship subscription. And if we want to create a new resource group, we can use AZ group create. I think that Azure CLI has pretty nice friendly syntax and it can be very fast over time. Let me show you the IntelliSense code completion. As I start to type, let me do AZG. I would have found that the autofill or the autosense is a little bit slow to show up. Let me press tab. And then again, let me wait for it to show up. You can force IntelliSense to kick in by doing a control space on Windows, but it looks like it, it finally did show up here. So we can do create, delete, list would be a good one, as you've seen before. So that's just the AZ tools extension kicking in here. Let me create a new resource group called ARM Test 3 in the East US. Now, for the heart of the matter, how do we validate and deploy a template using Azure CLI? Well, we're using the resource group as our deployment scope. So we're in AZ group, and then we use the deployment verb and then validate if we're gonna perform a validation. We need to provide the name of the resource group, which is arm-test3, and then we've got dash-template dash file, storage account.json, right? So that should work just fine. Let me right-click, run line in terminal. The result is succeeded. Remember, Azure PowerShell doesn't give you any feedback if the validation succeeds. At least we get a succeeded result with the CLI. And now to do a deployment, we have, it's a little bit different, az deployment 
Group is the scope. Create is the verb. Name. I didn't use name when we did our Azure PowerShell deployment in the previous lesson, but the name is what shows up in the Azure Activity Log in your deployment record. And it's a good practice to name your deployments so you know where they are and what they've come from. And I'll show you what that looks like in the portal after this finishes. So we've got name, the target resource group, which again is arm test three, and then dash dash template file storage account.json. Let me run that in the terminal. All right, it looks like it succeeded. I'm a little bit disappointed. I don't know if I'm looking at a bug or if I had did some user error stuff, but I was expecting to see the value of our output that we defined in the template here. I know that that output shows up when we do a PowerShell-based deployment. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, let's verify this by going to the portal and let me go to resource groups. There's our ARM test three resource group. And if we go down under settings to deployments, you can see there's where our deployment name shows up, CLI deployment. And let's head on over to storage accounts and we can see TW store and then the three characters off of the unique string, the first three. So it gives us a shorter, more manageable, yet unique storage account name. For further learning, I definitely want to make sure you've bookmarked the Azure CLI command reference, timw.info slash temp7a. For more info on Azure CLI interactive mode, go to timw.info slash temp7b. And Postman Learning Center, timw.info slash temp7c. What the heck is Postman, you're wondering? <laughs> well, I've been using that last for further learning link as a pre-read for your next lesson. In the next episode, we're going to use Postman to deploy a storage account using the Azure Resource Manager REST API. Course TOC, as I said at the beginning, is timw.info slash ARM. My Twitter is techtrainertim. My plural site courses are at timw.info slash ps. And my website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next episode.